Greetings, greetings, all my dreamers and dreamettes. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support my brand, it's inspiredbydreams.shop. And that's dreams with three Z's at that. Okay, before we get into this episode, I must put in this warning on these YouTube streets. You know, people have a lot to say about different things. But like I always say, the proof is in the pudding. But before we get into this, I just want to let you guys know, I do not want to be a rapper. I'm very comfortable where I live. I don't do these videos for views. I do them for viewers. Meaning, the people that understand what I'm putting out and the people that understand my content and the work I put in, I do it for them, not just views. I'm a black owned fashion designer as well as a content creator and my products are not bootleg. And most of all, I'm not doing anything on YouTube to be popular. I already know who I am and I value myself. Okay, so this video, what, I'm, what we're breaking down here is how the music industry got tricked into fake streams. Now we hear a lot of people saying they don't know where they're getting paid from and they don't know where these streams are coming from. But the main trick is the artist is just a buffering for the big guys to get the money. And some people may not like what I'm about to post or some people might not understand this video, but the ones that do, you'll never ever forget this video. So make sure you like and share this video because this is very important for the people not understanding how they got the music industry got tricked into the fake streams. Let's get it. The Rory and Maul podcast. I was watching it and Maul almost got close to cracking what was going on behind the scenes without even knowing it. Let's check it out and see what I'm talking about. Thought it'd be different. <laughs> the, the harmony. <laughs> you know, which do you about? think he'll uh, outsell Eminem? Okay, was it 287? First week? That's what uh, the death of Slim, Sh Slim Shady did? 287? Big Slim. And Rory knows something is up. Rory knows Just something weird. is up. He's into Big hip hop. He knows something I don't, is up. Like, Y'all tell me I don't. They're they're tricky. You're not buying these numbers. And Maul knows it too. But he, I just 287. And, don't, and I don't. Can't and again, maybe y'all like y'all said it's not my algorithm. I just. Felt the I don't hear. Those millions of and people. moving around outside. I don't hear the music. And I know Eminem's music is not playing. Eminem's music is playing in stadiums and arenas and things like that. Me and Peach crib. Me, you and Peach's house. I'm just saying it. <laughs> when you say 287 now, I should feel some of that music is all I'm saying. Well, These underground stream farms are so embedded in today's music business that the entire industry has been compromised. And the fans are unknowingly supporting it all. How are they tricking us? Because I see these people that go crazy. Album right. goes number one, but then they can't fill so up smart, the show. Smart. Right. So the math is not math. Use your brain, y'all. Use your brain. See, they can boost the views, but they can't boost the people. You have to understand what like some you even have content creators you'll see online. They can't do anything outside of online because the people that is drawn towards them, they might be not an age. The age group is not matching or they might be just bots put in. So that's bots that's boosting the numbers. You have to pay attention. Pay attention, y'all. Let's get it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's what faking the streams. Is it hacking the back end to make it look like it's an IP yeah. from the US? Yeah. Whatever, like, oh, it's nutty shit, but the reality is 
the labels are treating it like a marketing expense. Because in a sense, it like it almost is. is. Mm. You're gonna spend a hundred grand on billboards. You're gonna spend a hundred grand on streams. Right. What streams is gonna put you in a playlist? You're gonna spend real money to get fake streams that equate to real money. Mm. Don't be confused, y'all. Don't be confused. Use your brain. So that's why they think it makes sense because it's like, okay, the streams are fake, but the money's real. <laughs> if you're, it, let's say your song has 500 million streams, right? Organically. But let's say with fake streams, now you're at 900 million. No one's gonna sit there and be like, this yeah, is more like a 500 million uh, streams. Song. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. just gonna be like, this is a big song, makes sense, it that's has 900 fine. million. That's it. Honestly, this is what is. You gotta think about it. I explained this in between, but nobody wanted to hear when I when you hear about people, you know, fake views, this and that, and it's always like 30 million, 40 million here, 30 million there. I'm trying to tell you guys that it's bigger than you think. You're thinking that that rapper went and just paid for those views. Meanwhile, it's the people behind that rapper's the company that is using that rapper to funnel those views through because they have other things that they're going to win on the back end. It has really nothing to do with that rapper. But the views are not all real. You could believe me or you don't have to believe me because it might be your favorite artist and you might feel some kind of way or you just might be on the end of the better end of the stick. No matter what you feel, I'm just putting it out for the people that know how to use this. Streaming farm looks like, aka the black market of the music industry. It's how some musicians and labels distort reality to push their tracks to the top of the charts and earn more money. Streaming farms use bots to artificially play music on platforms like Spotify or Apple Music to drastically inflate the numbers of streams a song gets. Three analysts report from the Financial Times found that up to 10% of all music streams globally are fake. <laughs> this matters because there's a pool of money that streaming platforms distribute to the rights holders of songs. So when an artist is faking those streams, they're taking money out of that pool that could go to artists with legitimate streams. Today's world, everybody's using a streaming phone. Streaming phone, man, is a bunch of different cell phones that sound to Spotify. The they play a record over and over again. You get streams, you get paid. You know, plain and simple. Being able to use my streaming platforms, man, I was able to make hundreds of thousands of dollars. We were able to chart on Billboard. We were able to chart on Spotify. We were able to chart on Apple Music, Title, Shazam. These streaming farms help you start the process. Remember, he got the tactic is turning into legitimate money. These artists are on these streaming farms. They are on these streaming platforms. Major labels are running these streaming farms. They're running these streaming numbers. They're running these setups. All right. Now, what you're looking at here is are people that just like how they make clothes and manufacturers and you see factories and things like that these are people that's making stream forms so they because they know the profits on this they know that putting up these things they're going to get paid directly from that artist's budget so that artist is going to be getting paid and these streams these fake streams are going out through all of these services and that's how they can't track it because they are getting streamed from phones it's just phones from one building being used in the stream form and that's the reason why people have been getting fooled i wrote a record for asha the song came out let's say at the time the song streamed 70 million streams if I own 20% of the song or 25% of the song and it did 70 million streams and it's $3,000 per million stream. So it's 3,000 times 70. Right, right. So 210,000. Spotify collects the streams and then they pay the publishers. There's a fixed percentage on the publishing side based on the relationship between Spotify and the music publishers. So that $210,000 that that song made had to be bust down. My take on that 210, my take home was probably $1,500. And I, and I went. <laughs> sad, it's this sad, is how the math sad, worked. It was this simple. It's sad. Look, it was this simple. For Asha. If I'd have put that song out myself and only had 3 million streams, I'd have made $10,000. So I stopped giving records to artists. I'm like, I can give you this record circle. and you could fail and I can get a percentage of your failure or I could take 100% of my failure and I could take that to the bank. It's genius. So this is how you tell somebody who's buying their streams on Spotify. I'm gonna put you on game real quick. So the first thing to look out for is the follower to monthly listener ratio. If this ratio is super low, 
it might be an indicator that this person is faking or buying their streams. It doesn't necessarily mean it, but if they have 100 followers and 100,000 monthly listeners, something might be up. The next thing to check is <laughs> the fans also like section. <laughs> If you go down on their profile and fans also like, and it's a bunch of other random artists that you've never heard of and have no real real life connection to the actual artist, and they also have really bad follower to monthly listener ratios, something might be up. And the smoking gun that really, <laughs> you know, puts the nail in the coffin is if you go to the um, discovered on section of their profile and all the playlists are just full of random nonsensical songs that make no sense together. They're definitely buying. Another person that got caught up in a fake stream yeah. scandal was G Easy. In 2021, yeah. Rolling Stone posted an article called yes, Inside the Black Market Where Artists Can Pay for Millions of Streams. The general director of the International Confederation of Music Publishers admitted in the article that there is a black market for pay for play. The Blueprint Group manages artists like G Easy, Lil Nas X, Trippy Red, and plenty more. Rolling Stone was able to get the audio from the phone call and one of g Easy's people said, I want this to be big. Joshua Matt claimed that they can generate 200 million streams a month. I have a, I have a, uh, like a super basic question. When you say uh -huh. you're going to do crazy. Spotify, do Apple, like what exactly does that mean? What are you doing? Um, one, we're saving the album and running the numbers up. That's the first thing. Across multiple devices, all premium. Okay. Two, we're driving traffic. Wait, 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 hold on, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. I have more questions about that. So, wait, how how is that happening? Um, we basically, you know, crack the code and understand how to um, manipulate the system and, and hit astronomical numbers. <laughs> See, and now you guys know why they don't want to put people in there that has the education so they can get caught up in these contracts and down the line they'll be in debt to these labels. And also, you have to also think about it. They only, they knew the trick to it is people that's coming from low income places, if you just give them a piece of the pie, they'll never ask you to play. So the trick to it all is, by saying that means, is if you give people a piece and keep given the people that's just coming in and just not understanding how it works a little piece of it they'll feel like it's a lot because they don't know what to expect and that was the trick to the industry so when they started paying people through streams and people not knowing where that money was coming from or there was no way to calculate it that was the trick of the industry the whole trick is in marketing and the trick is in deception you have to be careful they can put anybody on top and that's the reason why I tell you an industry that respects money will never be an industry that stands tall forever. Because once you find the trick out, the magic trick's over. And always remember, when it comes to the trick, it's not about what you see. It's all about what you don't see. Until next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, a.k.a. Mickey Made It.